uh, can I take that question? Yes. The message it says clearly is that in Kenya, one thing and one thing matters alone, and that thing, thing is money. Uh, that after money, you use any and all means necessary in the pursuit of power. It is always about power. It is about accumulation of power. To use the same power to accumulate wealth, to have uh, you know more money, and it's a vicious cycle. Uh, this is a country that is number eight in the world, disparity between the rich and the poor. The statistics speak for themselves. Unemployment at 38% officially, uh, more than half uh, you know unofficially, statistically, one in every two Kenyans unemployed. You heard a lot of the candidates allude to this um, during the campaigns. Uh, serious challenges, uh, lack of uh, health care, uh, infrastructure is just now starting to come alive, you know, many, many years after, um, you know, President Kibaki came in, certainly a decade after. Um, and even with a budget, uh, Latif, we've talked about this many times on your show, of more than a trillion shillings, majority of Kenyans continue to wallow in poverty, unemployed and underemployed. And so uh, in, 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 in such circumstance, it becomes it behooves all of us to really, um, you know, dedicate ourselves to standing up this nation, uh, to be a shining beacon in the region uh, for, the, for the sake of, you know, uh, dignity and humanity and whatnot. And so, and so what's been happening is uh, a big time corruption of the entire system. So you're blaming... Use of money. You're, you're uh, blaming this on poor leadership and greed, basically. I mean, uh, abs absolutely. It's, it's basically greed. You know, if I could ask Matsanga a question, I mean, we know that the Mungiki were mobilized, that all these different things happened, that, you know, slashing of women and children and whatnot. I think you saw the article in the New Yorker last week, etc. And also the implications for that on, you know, the... Uhuru, and Dr. Matsanga has never I, 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 that. You this know, you happened. know what all of that means. I, 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 the psychology of this country and the I, image. I think, uh, um, Doro, when you turn that question, can be best asked to Mr. K, who is the defense lawyer of Uru Kenyatta. I, my role, Doro, and I want you to know it, Benj. I was a whistleblower. Something went wrong. If Mr. Kabutu comes out and says Matsanga saw me and gave me money, I will go for five years. I'm ready. I've never. And never, I found this witness on, on Facebook. Two, Dr. Mr. Masaga, Kabutu think, is going to be, Dr. He, Dr. I, I agree, he has to be taken for purpose. Here's, here's the thing, we yes, have moved I mean, on. The, the, issue, the issue here, yes. Benji, if I, if I get a moment, the issue here is not is no longer about the witness. Yes. Or Dr. Matsanga's role, yes. alleged role yes. in, in the whole thing. The issue now we've moved to the people who actually suffered. Yeah. The victims of the 2008 post-election violence. Yes. What hope do they have? I am uh, sincerely, my hearts are with these people because I wanted justice. Whoever touched the people in Rift Valley must pay for the crimes. And unfortunately, the chief prosecutor's office has missed, dashed the hopes of these people by poor investigations. I, I tell you, and I'm telling you here again, I've predicted several things. I'm predicting this one. This case of ICC on Uru Kenyatta will collapse. Why? The evidence is not tight enough. It's not watertight. It is going to collapse. It is unfortunate that this nation lost 1,300 people. And that these people are dying twice in the grave because the witnesses, uh, the, the, the suspects, are not the real suspects. It is now coming out to rule that even the witnesses were just growth from bars and told to go and give evidence which is collapsing. So this must be a warning. And the chief prosecutor cannot just go away by saying we found an error and then it is stops there. Somebody has to put a commission of inquiry in the ICC office, which is allowed by the Rome Statute, to find out how such critical evidence, where 1,300 people have died, you missed such error. You made us an error that makes the case collapse. This must do support that school of thought that we know we should actually open an investigation into the ICC office of the prosecutor. Well, for, for me, I don't think that will add any value. Instead, what we, what we should do, maybe Ben Suda, is to start a investigation so that we get to establish who the actual people were. Because as uh, Dr. Masanga has indicated, some of the evidences are collapsing. And there are many reasons being attributed to these. Maybe some witnesses have been compromised. These are financial inducements. And others have received a threat, so they're not willing to give information. But the most important or others thing, have sobered up, like uh, Dr. Matsanga is saying, they were drunk. Yeah, yeah. but, but uh, for, for me, I think the most important <laughs> for Wanjiku, who is uh, suffering, who are still at the IDPs, wallowing in poverty, is for us to have a, a, a new set of investigations coming up 
so that the guilty people are taken to court. Even if their names have been uh, thrown out of the ICC right now, we still need that uh, investigation to take place. And this time round, they should be given all the support that is necessary so that they don't get, uh, nobody gets away with mischief. As Benji is indicating here, that uh, we've got a system that sometimes when you've got uh, money and resources, you are able to go away with mischief. And that's the principal worry for Wanjiku back in the IDP. Mm. Yeah, she's matter. very nervous. She's very nervous that uh, as uh, Wanjiku, she thinks that uh, she's in the animal farm, that she has no say in this accumulated matter. And for me, for every Kenyan to have a peace of mind, maybe Ben Suda needs to start uh, fresh investigations. There's a chance that maybe Ocampo did this thing in a bit of a rush and didn't get sufficient cooperation. Now that Ben Suda is around and she's a daughter of the African soil, she probably appreciates our issues more than uh, Ocampo does. So she needs to set up a, a fresh set of in investigations find out the people, irrespective of their socioeconomic status, that we go deep into this. Because it, it's unacceptable for for somebody to get away with murder. Yes. I mean, in the literal sense of the word, or even in metaphysically, that yeah. everybody who participated in this, and it doesn't matter their station in life. There must be. There yeah, must I, be. I just want to add on what Didmas has said. It is not as simple as he might think. It is the Roman statute, Article 53 of the Roman statute, it's very clear. The chief prosecutor has a right to terminate the case at any point and come back the it's following morning. So what you are saying is this, but this does not remove an international commission of inquiry through the president of the state parties of ICC to call what happened. It has to be documented. A small thing in the court here, Mutunga will not just dismiss it. A, a woman pulled a gun in, in a, what is this suburb there? The chief, the former chief justice, uh, Jupiter, pull, uh, you know, pulled a gun to the, to, to, to the pass, to the Ascari. This took a commission of inquiry. You cannot just wash this so you're question. We, we shouldn't just let it pass. No, no. So that we, we, we get justice for the 1,300 people. What really happened? What the chief prosecutor, which I have done, I've met the chief prosecutor myself. I talked to her. I told her, please. Madam, exit under Article 53. Then the following morning, come back. Start again. L L and pick it. more people. There are more people responsible for this. And the, the list was 20 names. Why are we not sticking on the 20 names? And I get more. Because we need justice for every local man on the street. Okay, I'd like us to move on now from the ICC and come back locally into the local judicial system. And we know that the Coalition for Reform and Democracy has moved to the Supreme Court they're challenging the uh, declaration of the presidential election results. And um, this has, has, what can we say? There is a lot of anxiety in the air. There's, there's a lot of misunderstanding by the general populace of exactly what's happening in the court. What is court challenging in court? Just as we jump into that, allow me to um, just throw a word of caution to, again, my brother Matsanga here. Um, just, you know, sometimes some of the things we know we learn from the classroom, some we learn from work experience, etc. Uh, th the West usually do something in legal and criminal matters called profiling. And so you'll see a lot of um, communication such as, you know, is going around right now on Facebook and SMS, etc. And basically what happens is based on your approach and whatever stance you adopt, um, you're seeing such things as uh, the guy used to work for Joseph Coney, I worked for LRA, etc. Yeah. When these guys really, when it comes down to it, um, and I think this is what they're taking time now to perfect, I think that this thing is going to come down to a full blown confrontation, and I'd just like to urge caution. I but having said that, having said that, having said that, 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 no, 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 that's, having, that's, having, no on a that. national radio, right I want to put my record very clear that, boss, I did not. But that's what's coming. No, no, I'm whether just a that is what NGOs like you would do. Not me. I, I would like to make it very clear, categorically clear. I was the chief negotiator who brought peace in northern Uganda. I wasn't, and I have never been a combatant of the LRA. Therefore, a chief mediator mandated by the United Nations Security Council, mm. by the EU, AU, President Kibaki, Tan, Mukikwete, Museven, everybody, Bashir, Salvaki, signed an agreement before me leaving my London palatial home to go and negotiate a peace agreement. I was given a contract. So all this rubbish... But they will ask why you're not in your... No, no, no. I, I, I'm I, just saying... I'm I just... Go, no, 
no, they would ask why you're not Benji, in Uganda. Benji, Benji, I am in Uganda. It is not, I'm asking, not. You're asking. You are there. No, you are asking who? I'm, I'm saying what you will come you down the pipeline. You better go and ask. The no, stakes no, no, are this no, no, high. No, no. Don't speak for me. The so stakes are Let this me high. speak for myself. So, so let's move right. on from the Because issue. I've let seen, us. I've seen distortion. I'm not begging anybody like you in the to go and ask for ten Katie and Twitter so you know this. I am straightforward. Let's move on. I was Dr. not Masanga, Dr. Masanga, I'm gonna switch off your mind. Yes. Let's move on from the issue of the so, ICC but control the and debate come, and come to the issue of the coalition for reform and democracy and the pursuit of justice as stipulated in the constitution. What I've seen so far, Latif, coming now to this issue, is that um, the, the coalition, uh, the court, have appealed against uh, what happened a few weeks ago during the voting process and the tallying, etc. In my mind, um, I think that the reason we continue to lag behind as a country and as a, as a continent is because we are okay with okay. We'll talk about that just before we came on the show. Um, Ms. Lennon's amendment to the Elections Act 2012 stipulates very clearly, and I quote, that the returning officer shall transmit all results from the polling station upon which he will travel to the National Tallying Center uh, with the hard copies for, you know, comparing and validation. The reason that law was passed, Latif, is because of previous instances where a GK Land Rover would leave a Mashimoni uh, in Pwani, a rich Salama somewhere in Machakos, and find another GK, uh, you know, identical color, identical number plate, already carrying ballots, and that kind of thing happens. So the Krigler Commission ascertained that we had to uh, automate a lot of the processes um, to, in to enhance accuracy, to remove any gaping holes. And so for me, by day two, when it was clear that the, that the, that the server, that the electronic system which had cost Ken Kenyan taxpayers so much money wasn't working, in most decent countries, that is grounds for uh, stoppage and invalidation at that point and even for the arrest of the chairman in, fu in full glare of media cameras. In Canada, that's what they'd have done. But this is not Canada. Uh, just once. Yeah, well, for me, I'd like to look at it from a, a different angle, that Kenyans have got a valid expectation that IPC was going to conduct uh, a free, transparent process whereby Wanjiku's will is going to be respected. But however, IBC again has declared Mr. Uru Kenyatta as a president-elect. And the court feels that this is not fair. They think that uh, some things were not done right, which is why they've gone to court. And in my view, this petition by Mr. Raila Odinga, it's actually not about Mr. Raila Odinga. It's about our institutions. That everybody will know that in future, if you participate in an election and uh, you, you lose, you don't get the results that you need and you suspect mischief then you've got the principal obligation of going to the courts to have it uh, sorted out. You don't need to go to the streets. And for me, I think this case serves uh, Mr. Uru Kenyatta's interest more than it serves Arela's interest. Because right now, people think that uh, the election was not free and fair. And uh, depending on the outcome, of the, I mean, the outcome of the judiciary, then either will uh, probably, I mean, the judiciary may legitimate the entire process, say the thing was free and fair. In which case, then Mr. Uru Kenyatta now has got the mandate and full confidence of the nation to build the nation. And if they find it otherwise, then we go for another election. So for me, I think it's about the institutions. And Mr. Mbeji has spoken about uh, some of the details which form the basis of the of the court petition, which is exciting that uh, Mr. Uraro is leading the process. And uh, you know those six judges or five judges, however the number is going to be, have now got the principal opportunity of arbitrating and making sure that everybody respect the, uh, the outcome. That's uh, when Jiku is going to be excited about this. And you recall Dr. Mtunga has requested the media to cover this thing live. And I think part of the reason is for everybody in Kenya now to watch the proceedings and understand how the Supreme Court works. So for me, without even going to the merits and demerits, because you know we really don't have the sufficient information to to, to propose to into the, the process. I think it's an important thing that uh, number one, Mr. Relodinga indicated, is going to respect the outcome of the Supreme Court.